You know what I'm saying? It's that it's that situation when you got we we are living in a war zone. It's not as easy as these people are making us think that they just got some criminal ass black kids with guns. It is not like that. We live in hell. We live in the gutter. We got us stacked up 80 deep in one building. You know, by the time you get out your house, you strapped to protect yourself because you living in the same community that the police is carrying rifles and riot gear. Same. They need them riot. Ri excuse my language. I'm so sorry. The same reasons they need the riot hat, the riot jacket, the flak jacket, the double vest, the nine millimeter Glocks with extra bullets, the tear gas, the mace, all that. Who do you think the police is using that against? Dogs? So we fighting the same villains that they fight in the street. But instead of them seeing us fighting villains in the street, we all villains. Is your generation the one that is picking up for where the Panthers left off saying, all right, enough is enough. The generation before us forgot about the fight. We're picking it back up. Not only forgot about the fight, forgot about us. Yes, and we're picking it back up. But at this level, all we're trying to do is unite. And right now, as a year, we got a million people that's listening. Now we can tell them something. Now we can try to get them that way. And we might lose some. We might gain some. But we would never even have that audience had we not said what was real. You know what I'm saying? And the main thing for us to remember is that the same crime element that white people are scared of, black people are scared of. The same crime element that white people fear, we fear. So we defend ourselves from the same crime element that they scared of. You know what I'm saying? While they waiting for, to, for legislation to pass and everything, we next door to the killer. We next door to them, you know, because we up in the projects where it's 80 in the building. All them killers that they letting out, they right there in that building. But it's better just because we black, we get along with the killers or something. We get along with the rapists because we black and we from the same hood. What is that? We need protection too. Finally, I want to ask you about something that someone else asked you in the interview, and I thought the answer was interesting because I think it speaks to you and your generation a lot. Someone said, where do you see Tupac 10 years from now? He said, hey, I just want to be alive. That's real for you. That's so real. I, can't, I, I made a metamorphosis. I'm a new person today because I used to strongly and honestly, honestly, I feel like I could represent my generation so much because I honestly did not care whether I lived or died. But now, I cannot die with people thinking I'm a rapist or a criminal. I can't leave until this is straight. You know, I'm not suicidal. I'm not, I can't go until y'all really know what time it is. And then after that, boom, it's all over. And we can see, you know, how this shit fall. But that's how it is. And the reason being is because if I can't live free, if I can't live with the same respect as the next man, I don't want to be here. Because God has cursed me to see what life should be like. If God wanted me to be this person and be happy here, he wouldn't let me feel so oppressed. He wouldn't let me feel so trampled on. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't let me think the things I think. So. I feel like I'm doing God's work. You know what I'm saying? Just because I don't have nothing to pass around for people to put money in the bucket don't mean I ain't doing God's work. I feel like I'm doing God's work. You know what I'm saying? Because these ghetto kids ain't God's children. And I don't see no missionaries coming through there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing God's work. While Rev Reverend Jackson do his shit up in the middle class and he go to the White House and have dinner and pray over the president, I'm up in the hood, you know what I'm saying, doing my work with my fucks. And just because I don't live there don't mean I don't go there. I got to go there because I can't hang nowhere else. What would a Vietnam vet be like without a sergeant, without any backup, without any other soldiers, nobody but a Vietnam vet in Vietnam, when he came home, how would he be? And that's me. I had to go through all that street, war, everything, the same drugs that everybody else get turned out on. You know, where I would have been stopped short, of, I made it past. And here's where I am. But because I made it past, I missed some lessons. You know what I'm saying? And you can see the lessons that I miss when you talk to me. You can see where, where I haven't had a father when you talk to me. You know what I'm saying? You can see where I spent a lot of my time in the streets when you talk to me. Because the words that I say are not words that come from a mother's mouth or a father's mouth. It's words that comes from a pimp's mouth or a prostitute or a hustler or a drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? But to me, these were my role models. How much of that, though, in terms of growing up without a father, sometimes not being with your mother, do you, do you lament on and look back and say, damn, I, I missed something big? Everything. I, um, I know for a fact that had I had a father, had I had someone, and I hate saying this because white people love hearing black people talk about this, but had I had a father, had I had some of these opportunities, I'd have been able to help my mother more. She wouldn't have went the road she went. I could have been a better son. You know what I'm saying? She wouldn't have went that road. It was the absence of my father. You know what I'm saying? I'm dealing with him being daddy not being there. My mother's dealing with him being my man not being there. You know, so many problems in our community that, that um, affect everything. So by me not having that, 
I ain't never want to hear nothing about no kind of relationships between a black man and a black woman. I knew they didn't work. Because as far as I knew, my daddy was the coolest dude out there. And my mama was a panther. So if they didn't work, it don't work. That's how I felt. You know what I'm saying? And going out there, you know what I'm saying? It's like watching my mother just go through changes and everything. It's like my mother's my partner. She a soldier. You know, she a soldier like I'm a soldier. You know, and I, I watched the, the peep the game that she went through. If I, I would have went the same way my mother went had not she did her route and showed me which, where it went wrong with her. My mother always told me, don't you ever, ever just um, volunteer yourself to our people because they'll use you. That's what they do. You know what I'm saying? She never, she also told me to uh, follow my heart and for me to be the leader. But it's interesting to see just the change in your face, your reaction, your, your, your thought process. And that's all I ever wanted to do, ask my mama. I wanted to go to college. I went to school all the way and was ready to go to college. The only thing that stopped me was money. The time we, all, of my, all the kids in my school was writing applications to go to college, I didn't have no lights and no electricity. And that ain't my mama's fault. You know what I'm saying? So when I think back to that, I'm not thugging for me. I'm thugging for my family. I pay all the bills. You know what I'm saying? I, I feed my whole family, wrong or right, I do. And I can't stop. You know what I'm saying? And if thugging is going to make me a million bucks, because it just got me platinum, then that's what I got to do constantly. And if it makes me feel, because right now, I feel satisfied. I don't feel like I've ever embarrassed myself or my people, you know, and nothing that I've done. And yet and all, I got the whole world fear me. You know what I'm saying? At 23. Weighing 160 pounds, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't even started. I haven't even rolled my plan out yet, and they scared. I got the vice president to know who I am, the president, every cop in every city, you know what I'm saying? And I haven't even started working out a plan. I have something to offer to business that hasn't been shown before. You know, I have a whole energy that represents not just black youth, but white youth, Mexican youth, youth, you know what I'm saying? That, that, um, that change right before you go from being 18 and unresponsible to when you go to being like 21, 22, and the whole world's on your shoulders. Um, I, I believe strongly that um, my audience empathize with me because I show that side. I show that emotion, raw, uncut, good and bad. And so I think I can bring that um, more funnel, more um, directed into screenplays, more albums, producing, managing. You know what I'm saying? If I can um, figure out just how to control it, I can, uh, I can use it on a lot of different levels. I trip off because it happens out of nothing. It just goes, you know, everybody just be screaming and acting. And I just trip. I, I get uncomfortable. And I, it's like, it's like um, similar to a deer being caught in the, in the headlights. I just freeze, you know, and I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should um, be what they want me to be or if I should make them hate me so they can stop. You know, like say something mean so they can just stop. But I, I'm often I'm just like caught in the middle of it because it's, it's, you can't, it's, I mean, no one can do that. Police can't do that. They can't stand in front of all those people and control them with a gun and mace and all that. So me with just words, it's like a, um, a battle to find the right words to say at the right time. I'm, I'm curious, when you, when you think about the idea that you do have that kind of control over so many people, uh, in, in one sense, the whole idea of being a role model comes up in the imagery. And a lot of people who know you, and I talked to them beforehand, suggested that, hey, you know, when you meet him, he's going to be something entirely different than you imagine, hmm. and what the media is portraying him. What about that idea that that you have been portrayed? And sometimes, I mean, to be honest, you like the portrayal of, of you just hard, That's right. thug. That's right. Don't step on me. That's right. You're in trouble. That's right. Yet there's another side to you too. Mm -hmm. What about that idea that you've got to be able to figure out where you're going? Um. To me, it's like, um, it is my sensitive side that, um, that likes to blow up the hard side. Because if my, if, I can, if my image or my reputation can stop a confrontation before it happens, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. You know what I'm saying? I know how it is day to day. It's a constant um, man ego check going on in this street, in this world. So part of that is just like, you know, that's my, that's my, my resume. But as far as the media, they look at it as something different. They don't care about my resume. They don't care about me not getting in trouble. It's just another story, you know, and it's, it's a real story. They don't have to pay for it, and they're going to milk it for all it's worth. As far as people, they want me, when they first see me, to humble myself. They want me to be like this and da-da-da just because they're scared of me. 
but I don't feel like that's my job to humble myself to show you that I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat unless you're a threat to me. You know what I'm saying? So when people say, when you meet Pac, he's different than he is because when somebody one on one, anybody one on one, I believe honestly that I can talk. I believe that I have the ability to reason. I have logic. I have compassion. I have understanding. If we talk, there's no problems. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what happens. People use what they heard in the media, and that's how they come at me. And then, you know, we got a clash. One of the things that you read in the media is that you're angry, that you personify your generation, that you just got some angry folks out there, and you're one of them. I'll put it to you. Are you angry? Are you angry with what you see society is about? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely angry, confused. You know, um, a lot of the times that I sat up in court, I couldn't defend myself, you know what I'm saying? And it, was, it wasn't like the things they were saying about me were beyond my comprehension or um, the things that I could say weren't going to help my case. But because, I, I mean, I was, it's like being exiled, you know, from, from society. And that's how I feel. And this whole um, the anger comes from I'm tired of waiting for my past to get into society. All I ever wanted to do was make um, me and everybody around me feel more comfortable about where we were. You know what I'm saying? About the places that we stay. Where we, this is our home base. Let's build it up. Let's be happy about where we come from. You know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to assimilate and um, get a pass key to where they at. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that everything needs to be separate, but we got to find pride in ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and once you get the pride, like damn near two seconds after the pride comes anger from being held like that for so long and to be made to go through those changes, you get mad, you know what I'm saying? As soon as, I believe as soon as any black man receives his first three checks, he starts getting mad. Because it's not about the necessity of having to have a job and having to pay and having to do that. You don't care no more about the smiles and the, you know, yes, my son, because you done got paid, you know what I'm saying? And now it's like you want to save money. You want to help other people. And you see how, how far it is, how far you have to go to help anybody in your neighborhood. It's set up for me when I get paid for me to exit the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? The only reason I've had these problems is because I haven't left yet. And these problems don't come from a white man. It comes from just society, the problems that we have. Let me put this to you. A lot of people tell me, Tupac is, for the most part, a nice guy. This old thug thing, hype. Hmm. Good for record sales. Mm -hmm. uh, helps him identify with the young people who are out there and angry who would maybe label him a sellout like they did Hammer if he didn't mm -hmm. have that hard mm -hmm. side. What about that? First of all, nobody could call me a sellout. I'm not, I'm not going for that. I'm not even in that. I'm not, I'm not looking for approval from the black community because we don't give approval. You know, we don't really do nothing but exist. So it's not like I'm, black people could tell me, you a sellout or you true blue. You know what I'm saying? It's not that. I'm not even caught up in that. But um, I can see that, you know what I'm saying? The one thing we do have in common as black people is we share that poverty. So the thug side is more closer to the poverty than me being rich. You know, how can I come to any community center, you know what I'm saying, sporting a, a Rolex, presidential, all these diamonds, and be like, look, we, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> gotta, gotta. <laughs> but now, when I say we, they know what I mean. I'm not saying, like, I live in this neighborhood, and nothing, but I'm a thug, and they thugs. They can relate to it. I don't even have to say that, you know what I'm saying? When I come, I don't have to say I'm real. They already know that, you know what I'm saying? From, from me, from me being me, from not pushing the thugness, but I know from the business that everybody in this business is always whispering in your ear about what you can't say, what you can't do, what you can't wear in this world and in this world. It's two worlds, a white world and a black world. All I did was stand in the middle, you know what I'm saying, and, and say I'm, I'm living in these, I'm living in both worlds. I, I can go to the streets and survive, and I can go out here and do my business out here. I'm play devil's advocate again. All right. Critics say, yeah, but you being pimped. You're being pimped by the record, record executives who will allow you to do your thug life because it betrays a certain black. I mean, you've heard it, yeah. that if you were just a singer, you wouldn't have the same record contract you had. Right. But because you portray the thug life, the gangster rap, they've allowed you to make that money. They've allowed you to push and make your platinum. I beg to differ. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm getting pimped. That's true. But... Um, just like how a, how a woman would be, you know what I'm saying? Anybody to be pimped, you know? It's like, it's not that you get pimped, it's how long you get pimped, you know what I'm saying? Because if you really look at this situation, it is not I who's being pimped. When you look at them white kids with Raiders hats on, it's the white folks getting pimped, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm making their future. I'm writing down their curriculum. Right now, what I write in my album today, when it comes out in two months, that's what white kids is doing. 
So who really is getting pimped? I'll be, I'll be, I'll, what I'm writing in my raps is what them white kids is going to be saying to their mamas and daddies when they come home. Who is getting pimped? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a high school dropout. You know what I'm saying? As far as my teacher told me when I was in high school, I ain't going to be you know what I'm saying? I just got to, it's going down. You know what I'm saying? It's going down. <laughs> you know, everybody's getting pimped. Whether you work a nine to five or whether you work for yourself, you're getting pimped by somebody. That's not, the, that's not the crime. The crime is how long you allow yourself to get pimped. You have to come up. Everything is a come up. Everything is a struggle. You start from the bottom, work it to the top. The press and the media make you think that a black man arming himself is illegal or criminal or that he wants to arm himself to rob a liquor store or something. You know what I'm saying? That is for me to defend myself, and it should always be. It's just about surviving, you know, and we have to be honest about the tools that we use to survive. And why is a black life um, any, any more recuperable than a white life? You know what I'm saying? We know that they don't put the same security in the ghetto that they do in the, whites, in the, in, in the white neighborhoods. So therefore, for me to be out here saying don't, you know, put your guns down and no violence, that's hypocritical. And if I didn't talk about the violence, everybody would act like the violence wasn't there. We, as rappers, bought that violence. We, we bought the, the violence that we've seen on the street. We put in our records, put in our records for years. And after three, four years, people first, finally starting to see it because of all the statistics that's going on in the streets. If we stop talking about it, then they wouldn't take statistics. And when they stop taking statistics, then we'd be killing each other in the street, and these white people wouldn't care no more. Only people they, only reason they care is because, you know, there's been some strays, and we done slipped over in the white neighborhoods. And there's kids in Iowa that want to be like us. You know what I'm saying? There's kids in, in Indiana that's trying to be like us because they can relate too, you know what I'm saying? You even admit it, I don't live in that neighborhood anymore. There's no real reason for you to carry a nine millimeter. Don't believe that. Why? In, in two years, I've had a gun pulled on me by my limo driver, by police, by everybody, you know what I'm saying? And I better be, I better be, you know what I'm saying? I've been attacked, you ain't read the papers about these skinheads trying to blow up black churches, why? They see me as the enemy just like y'all do. You know what I'm saying? They can come to my house and sit outside my house just like anybody else can. A skinhead. And once my life is gone, it's gone. Can't nobody give it back to me. Not the judge, not the president, not the governor, not Calvin Butts, not Jesse Jackson. They can't do nothing but come to my funeral and talk pretty about how black people suffer. You understand? And as far as Jesse Jackson, my first acting job was at the Apollo Theater when Jesse Jackson was running for president in 1984. It hurts me for him to say anything negative about any rapper because we supported him. He should support us. You know what I'm saying? As far as his image, you know what I'm saying? What was he? What was he doing? You know, he should be the last person talking about gun violence when he sat right there while Martin Luther King caught one in the neck. You know what I'm saying? It, it, things ain't really changed that much. I swear to God, nothing I ever say is meant to be um, something where innocent people get hurt. Nothing I ever say is meant to be like a end all, let's go do it right now. Nothing. Everything I ever say, and if, if, if any, this is so we can set it clear, anything I ever say as it pertains to, um, to, to my peers and, and, and um, being strapped is only in self-defense. You know what I'm saying? Because my, right now where I'm at, the world is harsh. And I just don't got no beautiful stories. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna just be getting them ready. Cause that's why I think I messed up. If somebody would've grabbed me, pulled me to the side and been like, look, Tupac, as soon as you step out here, they're gonna be at you. If somebody would have explained it to me, I wouldn't have took the same mistakes. But I made those mistakes. And that was my job to stop somebody else from making those same mistakes. To lay it out. To lay out the real map on the world and how it is. Everything I'm saying is a warning, is, 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 is a plea for help. If everybody is so goddamn worried about me, why ain't nobody came to help me? You know what I'm saying? I never wanted to be no star. This ain't my job. I don't care if everybody don't cheer for me. You know what I'm saying? If you're not cheering for me for what I'm doing, don't cheer for me. Don't cheer because you think I'm cute. You know what I'm saying? Screw that. Cheer for me for what I'm doing, for what I stand for. And when I go to jail, you should cheer louder. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm standing up for what I do. I'm not robbing nobody, not stealing for nobody. I never took nothing. Everything I do, I do to represent my people. I do because I think this is what they want me to do. We killing each other because we killing ourselves. We not, when a man, when another man, I know, I've been in a position, it don't, it's, not, it's out of our control. It's not like he wants to kill. He just doesn't want to die. You know what I'm saying? It's that, it's that situation when you got, we, we are living in a war zone. It's not as easy as these people are making us think that they just got some criminal ass black kids with guns. It is not like that. We live in hell. We live in the gutter. We got us stacked up 80 deep in one building, 
You know, by the time you get out your house, you strapped for, to protect yourself. Cause you living in the same community that the police is carrying rifles and riot gear. Same, they need them riot, riot excuse my language, I'm so sorry. The same reasons they need the riot hat, the riot jacket, the flak jacket, the double vest, the nine millimeter Glocks with extra bullets, the tear gas, the mace, all that. Who do you think the police is using that against? Dogs? So we fighting the same villains that they fight in the street. But instead of them seeing us fighting villains in the street, we all villains. Is your generation the one that is picking up for where the Panthers left off saying, all right, enough is enough. The generation before us forgot about the fight. We're picking it back up. Not only forgot about the fight, forgot about us. Yes, and we're picking it back up. But at this level, all we're trying to do is unite. And right now, as a year, we got a million people that's listening. Now we can tell them something. Now we can try to get them that way. And we might lose some. We might gain some. But we would never even have that audience had we not said what was real. You know what I'm saying? And the main thing for us to remember is that the same crime element that white people are scared of, black people are scared of. The same crime element that white people fear, we fear. So we defend ourselves from the same crime element that they scared of. You know what I'm saying? While they waiting for, to, for legislation to pass and everything, we next door to the killer. We next door to them, you know, because we up in the projects where there's 80 niggas in the building. All them killers that they letting out, they right there in that building. But it's better just because we black, we get along with the killers or something. We get along with the rapists because we black and we from the same hood. What is that? We need protection too. Finally, I want to ask you about something that someone else asked you in the interview and I thought the answer was interesting because I think it speaks to you and your generation a lot. Someone said, where do you see Tupac 10 years from now? He said, hey, I just want to be alive. That's real for you. That's so real. I can't, I, ma I made a metamorphosis. I'm a new person today because I used to strongly and honestly, honestly, I feel like I could represent my generation so much because I honestly did not care whether I lived or died. But now I cannot die with people thinking I'm a rapist or a criminal. I can't leave until this shit is straight. You know, I'm not suicidal. I'm not, I can't go until y'all really know what time it is. And then after that, boom, it's all over. And we can see, you know, how this shit fall. But that's how it is. And the reason being is because if I can't live free, if I can't live with the same respect as the next man, I don't want to be here. Because God has cursed me to see what life should be like. If God wanted me to be this person and be happy here, he wouldn't let me feel so oppressed. He wouldn't let me feel so trampled on. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't let me think the things I think. So I feel like I'm doing God's work. You know what I'm saying? Just because I don't have nothing to pass around for people to put money in the bucket don't mean I ain't doing God's work. I feel like I'm doing God's work. You know what I'm saying? Because these ghetto kids ain't God's children. And I don't see no missionaries coming through there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing God's work. While Rev Reverend Jackson do his shit up in the middle class and he go to the White House and have dinner and pray over the president, I'm up in the hood, you know what I'm saying, doing my work with my folks. And just because I don't live there don't mean I don't go there. I got to go there because I can't hang.